Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone out to First Baptist. Uh, there's not very much uh, announcements here in the bulletin this morning, except today is the uh, Annie Armstrong offering. So let's uh, remember that. I think there's a little video and something later on. So we'll watch that. Uh, any other announcements we need to make note of this morning? Nope. Well, um, I want to tell you, Friday night, y'all missed a good service if you weren't here for the um, Good Friday service. We had a good service then. And then yesterday, I think Billy said it was about 140 or 50 total kids and parents that showed up for the egg hunt. So that was good. And uh, I want to thank uh, Autumn and Hannah. They did an excellent job on that. So that was good. And thank everybody that brought eggs. We ended up um, having close to 20, between 25 and 2,600 eggs. So each kid got around 30 eggs. So that was really great. Thank you all. All righty. No other announcements? Matt, I yes. would just like to say that I just want to tell everybody how much I appreciate our church and our church family because we had the uh, prayer breakfast here Friday morning and it was sponsored by the Business and Professional Association, which I'm a part of. But we had several members that came to the breakfast <coughs> and they stayed afterwards and helped, helped clean up and helped do and put tables up and everything. And I just appreciate how everyone in our church family just joins in and helps each other. Anything else? Before we get in the uh, prayer request, was there any birthdays this past week? Nobody got a year older. All righty. Let's go ahead and go with the prayer request. We got some in the, uh, the bulletin here. Um, I know we probably need to remember Kyle as his brother passed Friday night. Um, any others? Remember Reese. Remember Reese. <laughs> Remember my cousin Leslie. Remember Mike. <coughs> Any others? Remember my sister. Remember this. I have a cousin Robin that just started treatment for breast cancer. Remember this. Any others? <coughs> Any other? Remember Catherine, she will be having surgery Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. Remember Catherine. Remember our military that's away from her family. This time last year, Tom was in the Middle East, and so I'm glad that we didn't have him home to celebrate Easter with him. So remember what he's always Remember this. Any others? Unspoken. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for another opportunity to be in your house, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings you've bestowed on each and every one of us, Lord. Please be with each and every one of these prayer requests that's made, been mentioned here today, Lord, the spoken and the unspoken, Lord, that your will will be done. Lord, please be with, be with Corey as he brings the message today, Lord, and if there's one here that don't know you, Lord, in that personal way, Lord, that Today will be the day that they get saved. These things we pray, Lord. Amen.
sing a couple of songs and then you'll get to join in and help us with one that you might know. Pray for us.
going to sing He Was Born to Die. <clears throat> kind of follow along. You should know these songs. Sing the first verse and then go to the next song.
I'm going to request prayer for everybody singing today because allergies are in full force. <clears throat> Consider the lilies, they don't toil nor spin, and there's not a king with more splendor than them. Consider the sparrows, they don't plant nor sow, but they're fed by the master who watches them grow. We have a heavenly Father above. With eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies and then you will know. May I introduce you to this friend of mine who hangs out the stars, tells the sun when to shine, and kisses the flowers each morning with dew. But he's not too busy to care about you. We have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies and then you will know.
got a lot to praise him for. If you're glad today to, that you're saved, say amen. 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 I just want to make sure everybody's awake this morning. And uh, I'm glad that God's given us an opportunity to come and gather in his house this morning and serve and worship and praise him. Uh, and uh, you know that we had a wonderful, great verse on the front of our bulletin this morning. And it said, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Man, is that not encouraging this morning. Uh, for us that have been saved by God's grace, one of these days, we will pass away. We are going to die. We are going to leave this walk of life. But I'm glad that I've got hope in a home that's eternal this morning. Amen. And I'm going to be with the Lord Jesus. And I'm going to spend eternity with him. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm, I'll say this this morning. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord, today I couldn't think of a better day uh, to come to know Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Amen? Amen. Uh, today is a special day. Not only is it Easter and we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, uh, but today is also the day for the Annie Armstrong Easter offer. And, uh, and we're going to see just a video uh, here in just a minute. And uh, then we're going to take up the offering. But we encourage you this morning, as you give, we hope, and we've been saying this for the last several weeks and months uh, here at the church, be praying about what God has laid on your heart and what he leads you to give today. And, uh, and the 100% of this offering goes to missionaries that are serving our Lord and Savior in North America. Uh, the United States of America is becoming one of the greatest mission fields on the face of the earth. It's no longer the third world country or the 1040 window as we've all heard growing up here and about, but the United States of America, there are more people in the United States of America that does not know Christ. And I pray that, that we can continue to be about God's business and God what he's called us to do and that is to share the gospel of our Savior Jesus to the lost and dying world. Amen? Uh, so you be praying about that this morning as we watch our video and afterwards we'll take up the offering. My name is Amr. I'm from Jordan. I moved uh, with my family to the uh, U.S. We faced in Jordan a lot of persecution. Uh, it was so hard, but when we came here too, it wasn't easy for us. Me and my wife, uh, Victoria, was praying for the, um, the state and the cities that don't have Arabic church. After a long time praying, God said Cincinnati. We have a significant group of Arab-speaking people, so we've been praying for quite some time. God, would you give us someone that we can just kind of turn loose in that people group, right? And uh, Honor literally just called me out of the blue. There is not a lot of people know the culture, know their language, and can share the gospel with them. This is why we came here. Farmers and Family was part of the coronavirus relief. They just kind of called and said, hey, we got some free food. Would you guys be able to hand it out to your community? 
We opened the parking lot and the people coming with the cars. We talk with them, we pray with them, and also we take some boxes to deliver it to the families. They can't come here. It's an opportunity to share the gospel. We'll continue with games, we'll have egg hunting, and we'll have dinner, and we'll invite the people to go inside the church and join our service. It's wonderful what's going on. They feel in the church, they feel we are more family. It's an amazing opportunity. We came to reach our community. That All righty. At this time, we're going to ask you, if you would, to come and bring your offering this morning. Uh, before we do some prayer over it, uh, our children, uh, they've been taking up the uh, in, in their mission friend class. Uh, had a little uh, icing cut that they made for a change cut, and uh, it's a change of lives. And so they changed, so our children are going to be bringing as well. They're going this morning this offering. But let's pray, and you can bring your offering this morning. We thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you so much. Lord, for this morning, you give us to be able to come and just worship you. Thank you, Father, for the already been able to sing and Father, yet to sing over the world, you will bless them and use them. Sing through them this morning. God, we pray that you would have uh, the message today that, Father, Lord, you just spread it is that you won't say it and done. We pray for this offering that, Lord, you would pay it and use it. Your honor and your kingdom, Father, to change lives in North America. That, Father, your people and the missionaries, Father, in this country could continue the gospel and spread the gospel. And tell the world that the cross of Calvary for their sins, you are risen, you are alive for this day. And all in your name. This time, if you would, come and bring your offering.
I'm thankful this morning of our Savior Jesus Christ of life this morning. Uh, he speaks the words of life, and he, but he makes all things new, aren't you? Uh, no, no matter this morning where you've been, serve a God today that is in the business things new. He teaches us and tells us that any man in Christ all things have passed away, but behold, all things have become new. Even in the Old Testament, God began to speak through his prophet Ezekiel, and he told Ezekiel to tell the children of Israel in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem he told me, he said, listen, I'm going to do a new thing in you, and he's going to give you a new heart. And I'm going to take that stony heart, that heart of stone, that, that heart I'm going to put away, but I'm going to give heart this morning that can make a difference in your life if you put your faith and trust in him, he can help you and he will uh, it's so good to be here and it's so good to be in God's house. thankful for each and every one that come to be with us this morning if you're visiting with us well I hope and pray we've made you feel welcome and we've made you feel at home I hope and pray most of all the good Holy Spirit, the presence of God this morning has made you feel at home. And uh, I do want to appreciate, I do thank you and I appreciate everybody that's come be with us. want to welcome and thank those that are watching and viewing online as well today. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning. If you have your Bibles today, we are going to be reading from the book of John chapter 19. John chapter 19. We're going to eventually go into chapter 20. But for right now, we're going to start with John chapter 19, verse number 38. And uh, I hope everybody ate breakfast this morning. I really do. It's about, about an hour of preach. You pray. And John chapter 19, start with verse number 38. This morning, I would like to stand today for the reading of God's Word. John chapter 19, verse 38 is where we and after this, Joseph of Arabia, being a of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came not and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes, with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, sepulcher wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, there because of the preparation day the sepulcher was not at hand let's pray Thank you for today ask and we pray this morning that you would just preach the words of life today God give us exactly Lord what we stand in need of this morning God we just pray for the drawing power and the convicting power Lord of your Holy Spirit we pray today that, Father, Lord, you would encourage us. We pray that you would guide us, Lord, and you would direct us. And God, help us, Lord, to remember today what you've done for us so many years ago. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you, Lord. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. You may be seated. My own guys, my good, all right. John 19, verse number 38. As we look this morning, <clears throat> the Bible says there, there was a man named Joseph Arimathea. This man, Joseph, the Bible said here that he was a disciple of Jesus. It said, but sick fear of the Jews, sought Pilate, that was the body of Jesus, and Pilate, and he came there, he took the our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we look at verse 9, there's another man 
that appeared on the scene. The Bible says that, and there came also Nicodemus, as at the first came by night, and brought a picture of myrrh and aloe, 100 pound weight. It said that they took the body of Jesus, wound it in linen, clothes with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Uh, when you begin to look and you study on this man by the name of Joseph Arimathea, uh, we find that there's not much mentioned about him in the scripture other than this place. Uh, when you begin to look and kind of dig a little deeper about him, you're going to find that Joseph Arimathea was a man of the Jewish Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. This was the Jewish council, the religious group of people of that day and time. Uh, now, we also know a man by the name of Nicodemus. Well, Nicodemus is very known. Uh, we know a little bit about Nicodemus from John chapter 3, where the Bible said that Nicodemus came to our Lord by night. He came to night at night to talk with the Lord, to talk with Jesus. Now, why? Because Nicodemus came to talk to the Lord night. Well, we also know this about Nicodemus. He as well was of part of council. He was also part of that Sanhedrin, those religious people that was there in Jerusalem. So Nicodemus came to Jesus at night because he didn't want anybody else seeing him, knowing that he went to the Lord by night and he talked with Jesus. And Nicodemus said these words, he said, for master, he said, don't you think that's interesting? In John chapter 3, Nicodemus referred to Jesus as master said, for master, he said, no, that thou art a teacher that's come from because no man can do miracles that you do. Nicodemus knew there was something about this man Jesus. He knew there was something great. He knew something special. He knew about this man, the Jesus Christ, the, the one, the Messiah. That was to come. He knew something different about this man by the way he walked, by the way he carried, by the miracles that he performed, the things that he did, my friend, the things our Lord and Savior Jesus while he was on this earth. Nicodemus saw something different in our Savior. I thought about that. Not to be the same way. We are to be Christ-like. We are to be Christians. We are a difference in this world, aren't we? And people ought to know that we're Christians by the way we walk and live and act and we breathe and talk. But listen, you see, I'm glad to know this morning that each and every one of us that's been saved, we've been saved by the grace of God. And a sinner that's been saved by God's grace, listen, Friend, if it wasn't for the grace of God this morning, all men be most miserable. Amen? Uh, listen, we've got a hope that we've got look to look forward to. And that hope this morning is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? We find that Nicodemus, he came to the Lord and he said, For Lord, he said, and he began to talk to him a little bit more. And Jesus told Nicodemus something. He said, Nicodemus, he said, you cannot see the kingdom of God, he said, unless you be born again. Nicodemus asked the Lord a question. He said, Lord, he said, how can I, a man of my age, an old man, how can I go back and be born again of my mother's womb? He said, that just don't make sense. And Jesus said, no, Nicodemus. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. He said, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He said, Nicodemus, I say, you must be born again. He said, you must be born of the Spirit of God. And Titus called it a regeneration. And Jesus gave Nicodemus the salvation plan. He said, you must be born again. Born of the Spirit of God. Calling upon the name of Jesus. Believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. And that He arose the third and glorious day. And my friend, the Bible said that whosoever believeth on him shall be saved. I'm glad to know this morning if you'll call upon the name of the Lord, you can and you shall be saved this morning. 
Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were religious rulers and leaders. But if you notice right here in the scripture, what did they do? The Bible said secret, but secretly for fear of the Jews. Did you know that Joseph and Nicodemus risked their very life, their reputation, their position, their job on the Sanhedrin Council to go and get the body of Jesus and take him and bury him. Because if anybody knew or seen what they had done, they could have easily lost their position. They could have easily lost their reputation among the Jews, among the religious crowd. But my friend, what they did was in secret. But I begin to think about that and the Lord reminded me, I believe with all my heart this morning, I believe our Lord, I believe our Savior, Jesus Christ, would, I believe He wanted Nicodemus. And I believe He wanted Joseph of Arimathea. I believe He wanted them to serve Him and follow him in open I don't think the Lord wanted them to just be followers of him in secret but I believe he wanted them to follow him openly and the Lord reminded me today listen you and I that have been saved by the grace of God we ought not to hide our faith in the Lord we ought not to serve or follow Jesus in secret today but we ought to follow him openly in front of all that everyone may know that we've been saved Saved, uh, that we've been born again, uh, that we know Jesus uh, in the free pardon of sin. Uh, oh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works uh, and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Amen. It's all about Him today, serving Him, following Him, being obedient to Him. We get down here to the close of the couple of verses that we read. The Bible said, what did they do? It said, now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And it said, in the garden, a new sepulcher where ne where, where in ne was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day. For the sepulcher was nigh at hand, meaning it was near. That sepulcher, that, that tomb, that grave, it was in the garden where the Lord, it was near in that garden where the Lord had died on the cross of Calvary. It was there where they had crucified him. It was close by. But we find when you look at that word sepulcher, it has a great meaning to it. And I've read this and I've studied this and I've seen this for years. But, but for some reason this morning, the, the Lord led me to go back to that word and to look it up. And when you look up the word sepulcher in the Greek meaning and how it was used in this context in the scripture, the Greek definition for the word sepulcher means remembrance. It means a place of internment. It is a grave, a sepulcher, a tomb. It comes from the Greek root word to mean memory, remembrance, to remind, to recall to mind, be mindful, remember. Man, is that not powerful this morning? They took Jesus and laid him in this tomb where no man had yet laid. But that word sepulcher means to call to remembrance to call to mind to remind us and church I want to encourage us all this morning we need to have our mind our heart call to remember and remember what the Lord Jesus Christ done for us not only on the cross of Calvary but look at the grave this morning look at the tomb look at the sepulcher remember what happened remember the sepulcher remember the tomb and you say preacher what do we remember about it remember that our Lord laid in that tomb he laid there but on the third day he arose amen on the third day he got up on the third day, he, re he re rose. He's alive. He's no longer there this morning. That tomb is empty. The grave is empty this morning. Remember what God had done for us. We're going to read on just a little bit more. Chapter 20, verse number 1. If you look at that picture, I think Francis has got it before we go any farther. That sepulcher right there 
Uh, Francis is going to put it up. That is the tomb, the grave, where the Lord was laid and buried. The garden tomb, as it's referred to. Go on in chapter number 20, verse number 1 says this, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Could you just imagine that for just a minute? Think about that for just a few minutes. Mary Magdalene going down to where the sepulcher, where the tomb was, where that grave was. And when she was going down, the Bible said early, the first day of the week, when she got down there, what did she see? The first thing she saw was that that sepulcher, that the stone that was in front of the opening in the tomb and the door, it was been rolled away. It was no longer rolled over. It was no longer sealed. It was no longer shut. But that stone had been rolled away. You go back for just a few minutes in the book of Matthew, the Bible teaches us this, that Pilate and some of those men got together and they said we need to set a guard over this tomb we need to put some men down here to watch it because we're afraid when Jesus was living he said in three days he would rise again and we're afraid that his disciples are going to come and they're going to steal him away and they're going to make a great big ordeal about this so what did Pilate do he said to set a watch over it and the Bible said that he rolled that stone over the tomb and it said that there was a seal that was put on it from Pilate. You go on back into the book of Mark, you'll find that Mary Magdalene some of those women, as they were walking down to the tomb, they began to talk amongst themselves and they said, how are we going to get to the body of our Lord? How are we going to anoint Him? How are we going to prepare it? How are we going to get the spice and the oils and all those things on Him? The stone is in front of the tomb. And they said this stone is too great, it's too heavy for us to roll away but I'm glad this morning my friend God made a way God rolled that stone away and I'm so glad to know this morning that whatever you are facing in your life whatever burden whatever struggle whatever you've got going on in your life this morning my friend it may be too heavy and it may be too great it may be too much for you as yourself as an individual to bear but I'm glad this morning just as that stone was too heavy it was too great for those women to roll away on their own listen God took care of it for those women God rolled that stone away and God can do the same for you this morning he he can roll that burden away that's in your life. He can roll that heaviness. He can roll that struggle. He can roll that giant. He can roll that great thing. Uh, my friend, you're facing. Uh, God can take it away and roll it away just as he did that stone. But she noticed that it was all gone, that it was no longer in front of the tomb. Verse number two, hang with me this morning. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved it's, that's John the writer of the gospel of John is the other disciple whom the Lord loved and he saith unto them they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher and we know not where they have laid him did you catch that this morning who was the first person that Mary Magd Magdalene ran to and come to the Bible said Simon Peter now, what was the last account that we had of Simon Peter? The last account of Simon Peter, when you go back and you look at John chapter 18, and verse number uh, 8, chapter 18, verse 25 says this, And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. And they said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest being his kinsman whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. So the last account of the gospel that we have of Peter, before Mary Magdalene come to him, Peter had denied the Lord three times. But yet he was the first one Mary come to. 
Go back just a little bit farther, chapter 18. We find in verse number 10, here's what Peter did. Before Peter denied the Lord three times and before the cock crew, here's what Peter did. Peter said, then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. And then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? We're talking about a man that told the Lord at the Last Supper. He said, Lord, I will go with you. He said, all the way, even unto the death. We're talking about a man that loved the Lord. We're talking about while he was on the shore, my friend, and as he was fishing, when the Lord walked by and he said, Simon Peter and your brother Andrew, he said, come follow me, I'll make you a fisher of men. And the Bible said that they left their nets, they forsook all they had, and they went and followed the Lord. We're talking about a man that loved Jesus, but yet he denied him three times. Oh, but my friend, there's grace. And there's mercy. And even though Peter denied our Lord three times, later on in the book of John chapter 21, you're going to find that the Lord Jesus gave Peter a chance at redemption. Because the Lord asked Peter these questions. He said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said, feed my sheep. And he said, asked him again, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, well, yes, Lord, you know. You know I love you. He said, feed my lambs. And the Lord asked him that third time. He said, Peter, do you love me? But this time Peter was aggravated. He said, Lord, you know I love you. You know this. Jesus said, feed my sheep. You know what the great thing about Peter's life and testimony is? Is from that day forward, God used Peter in a mighty way. You go on to the book of Acts, chapter number 1 and 2, you'll find that Peter was the one that was there in the upper room gathered with all the other Christians. And they were praying. How did God use Peter? The Bible said that the Spirit of God come on to Peter and Peter stood under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit and Peter began to preach Jesus Christ. And when Peter preached, the Bible said there were people that were gathered there that day of different tongues and nations and languages, but the miraculous thing was is they heard the gospel of Jesus in their own tongue. In their own language. God used Peter in a mighty way. You say, preacher, how's that? Because 3,000 souls that were gathered there that day of Pentecost were saved and come to know God as their Savior and as their Lord Jesus. Listen, my friend, no matter where you've been or no matter what you've done, God's grace is sufficient. And God can use you in a great, mighty way. I want to finish up this morning. Verse number 3 says this. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying yet when he not in, went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went to the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary, Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one on the he one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they saw unto her, and they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, 
and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabbani. Which is to say, Master. That word, Rabbani, means in the Greek, Lord, my Master. It was an, it was an official title of honor. When Jesus spoke the name Mary, she knew exactly who he was. Because the Bible said that she's supposing him to be the gardener. But when Jesus spoke her name, she knew exactly that it was her Lord. It was her Master. When Jesus speaks your name, we know it, don't we? He calls our name not like Mom calls our name. Not like Dad calls our name. Not like our brother or sister or wife or husband. Mamma, Papa, but Jesus calls your name in a different way. And when he calls your name, you know beyond any shadow of a doubt who he is and who it is. Mary said, Master, I hope this morning that Jesus is Lord. And I hope he's master of your life today. And if you don't know him as Lord and Savior and as Master, today would be a wonderful day. As Jesus calls your name, won't you answer? Won't you respond? Won't you accept the invitation that Jesus gives? Closing, Mary was given the greatest message. Last verse said this, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Mary carried the greatest words of Jesus and message that's ever been carried. And she took it to his disciples. And those words were, as the Lord said, I send unto my Father and to your Father, and unto my God and your God. Matthew, Mark, Luke and te teaches us and tells us that Mary took the words that she heard at the tomb by the angels when they said, He is not here. He is risen. Amen. Church, the greatest message this morning that you and I can proclaim is that Jesus Christ is risen. He's risen from the grave. He's risen from the tomb. You know, John even saw this in the book of Revelation, chapter number 1. He saw the Lord, and he said that he knelt as though he was dead, but yet the Bible said that Jesus spoke these words to John. He said, John, he said, I am he that was dead. But I am alive forevermore. And he said, I have the keys of death and hell. Jesus is the great conqueror this morning. And he has the victory. And I want to share this and leave you this this morning. If you don't have victory in your life, you can have it today. If you'll call on the name of Jesus. He can give that to you. He can bring that to you. He said, I come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. Amen. Won't you surrender your heart and your life today to the Lord Jesus? Let him be Lord. Let him be master of your life today. As we stand to our feet, the altar is open as they come and they get a song together. I want to encourage you this morning, if you would pray and be obedient. Father, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for this time that you've blessed us with this morning.
time to worship, a time to remember, a time to reflect. God, a time just to think about what you've done for us. Lord, as we come to the close of this service, and as the invitation, Father, is given, and as the song is being sung, we pray this morning that your Holy Spirit would just move and would speak to hearts today. And I pray that, Father, just as you speak, and as Mary heard your voice, as you spoke her name, her response was, Rabbanai, which means Lord, my master. I pray today, Father, that someone would surrender their heart and their life to you. And Lord would surrender and allow you to be Lord and be master of their life today. We love you. We thank you. And we praise you for the victory and the life that we have, that we've been given through you today. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Mind the Lord today. The altar's open. Thank the Lord for this day he's given us and he's blessed us with. And uh, we certainly do thank the Lord for each and every one that's come to be with us this morning. And we want to encourage you to come back and be with us any service, any time. Uh, Wednesday night at 7, we have classes for our youth and our children downstairs. Classes for all ages and then our adults. We meet upstairs here for prayer meeting and Bible study Wednesday night. And then Sunday school at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. We have a wonderful group of Sunday school teachers here at this church. And uh, I just don't say this lightly, but I say this, and I've said it several times. I truly believe we've got the best group of Sunday school teachers around. I believe that. Uh, our teachers are great. They study. They pray. They prepare. And they share what God gives them and what He lays on their heart and leads them to on Sunday morning. So if you're looking for a small group, a Sunday school class, come be with us at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. As I said, we've got classes for all ages. We'd love to have you. And uh, that starts at 10, and then worship, of course, follows on Sunday mornings at 11. So uh, we want you to come be with us. If you're visiting with us today, we would ask if you would take just a few minutes, if you've got a bulletin, this card in there, if you would fill that out and drop that in the office this morning on your way out the door. I ask our young men uh, who are busy this morning with another job. They'll come and uh, get our office plates and get ready to receive our offering this morning. As they're coming, does anybody have a word of thanksgiving or a word of praise on your heart that you'd like to say before we dismiss today? I'm thankful that Jesus is alive. Amen. Yes. Amen. Appreciate that. Thank the Lord. Anybody else? Well, I'd just like to say, preacher, it's been a wonderful service. This message preached to Saying the good spirit here. But you know, as you, it's just a praying there, the spirit just kind of.
and spoke to you and said, what are you going to do with what you, as you heard today? Are you going to take it with you out of these four walls and out into your everyday life, or are you going to leave it on the doorstep? I, I don't know why I feel that way, but that's what I feel to me. So I all of us, when we leave, let's tell somebody this. The good news of Jesus, the good worship service we have, and invite people. Thank the Lord for that testimony. I believe the Apostle Paul, and, and as Billy mentioned, uh, for the preaching of the cross was foolishness to those that uh, perish. But to us, it's been saved. Man, it is the, the power of God, isn't it? Amen. I'm thankful for that. All righty. All hearts and minds clear this morning. I hope and pray everybody gets to enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy your time with your family and friends, and uh, just thank the Lord today for what He's done for us. He's risen, he's alive, and alive forevermore. You know, we serve a living God today. He's not dead, but he's alive, and he lives inside of our hearts, and I thank the Lord for that this morning. Thank you for being with us today. I'm going to ask Brother Gary if you would dismiss us this morning in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for letting us come out. We thank you for a beautiful day, Lord. It reminds us that you're in charge, and Lord, you take care of us when nothing else can be done. You take care of us, and I thank you. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for the blessings. I thank you for the love you've shown me. You show our congregation, our people, and the talents they have that they use for thee. I thank you for that, but I ask that you help us, that we might not just keep it in here, Lord, but that we might take it out with us, like Billy said. And we might show others that Jesus is real in our lives and that we stand for something because he died on Calvary for us and he arose and he lives so that we might. We ask that you bless. We wouldn't want to forget the ones that are bereaved, the ones that are sick, the ones that need you, but we wouldn't want to ever forget to thank you and praise you for all you've given us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.